The wicked have told me lies, but not so is your law. I spoke of your decrees before kings and was not confounded. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Dear brothers and sisters, gathering together on this 1st of June, we do so on the memorial of the martyr St. Justin. Justin, uh, a martyr of the mid-2nd uh, century, and during the time of the uh, persecution, persecutions of the church in her early beginnings, and so recognizing uh, whether as clergy or lay or just in, as a layman, uh, we are called to witness to those truths that sometimes are not accepted uh, by higher society or wider society itself. And so recognizing the truth of God's love, the truth of the human person made in his image and likeness, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare <coughs> ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously taught St. Justin the martyr the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, grant us through his intercession that, having rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. On the night of Pentecost, after I had buried the dead, I, Tobit, went into my courtyard to sleep next to the courtyard wall. My face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know that there were birds perched on the wall above me till their warm droppings settled in my eyes, causing cataracts. I went to see some doctors for a cure, but the more they anointed my eyes with various salves, the worse the cataracts became until I could see no more. For four years, I was deprived of eyesight, and all my kinsmen were grieved at my condition. Alicar, however, took care of me for two years until he left for Emmaus. At that time, my wife Anna worked for hire at weaving cloth, the kind of work that women do. When she sent back the goods to their owners, they would pay her. Late in winter, on the 7th of Dystrus, she finished the cloth and sent it back to the owners. They paid her full salary and also gave her a young goat for the table. On entering my house, the goat began to bleat. I called to my wife and said, where did this goat come from? Perhaps it was stolen. Give it back to the owners. We have no right to eat stolen food. She said to me, it was given to me as a bonus over and above my wages, yet I would not believe her and told her to give it back to its owners. I became very angry with her over this. So she retorted, where are your charitable deeds now? Where are your virtuous acts? See, your true character is finally showing itself. The word of the Lord. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. 
he shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. The heart of the just one is firm, trusting in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that brings to his call. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not, considered, you, you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought one to him, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. To enlighten the eyes of our hearts. To consider that our hearts have eyes, as it were. <laughs> Enlighten the eyes of our hearts means that our hearts can be darkened or our hearts can be enlightened. Meaning that we can perceive the reality or the circumstances in which we find ourselves according to um, the darkness of the heart or the enlightenment of the heart. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call? We, you and I, again, are called in a relationship with the Lord Jesus. We are called into a relationship with God Almighty, the creator of the universe, the omnipotent, the all-powerful. We are called into a relationship with the creator, though we, as mere creatures, made in his image and likeness, but still limited and finite in our being. And yet he has placed within our hearts, he has placed within our very selves, not just in the flesh of the body, the heart that beats, but the very, the very heart of the soul where, that is our conscience, that is our truest and deepest selves, sometimes where we don't even know ourselves so fully or so well. But we pray that we come to know as we come to be, as we come to uh, reflect all the more who we are in God. And God has created us for himself, has created us like unto himself. Not that we are omnipotent or all-powerful, not that we are, as it were, equals to the creator, but that we are, that we are ourselves as, as he has imagined us to be, not as we imagine ourselves to be. And, and in Christ Jesus, we see the visible image of the invisible Father. In Christ Jesus, we see a, um, the only begotten Son of God who allows us to be adopted as the sons and daughters of God. And it doesn't mean that suddenly we'll all be cookie cutters of Jesus Christ, but it means that in Christ Jesus, we will find, we will find the, the way, the truth, and the life. 
of who we can be as the authentic sons and daughters of God made for holiness. And so we see Christ Jesus as one to follow. He knows the truth. Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. Even the Pharisees and Herodians in today's gospel who are there to ensnare him in speech. And they recognize that he is one who teaches the way of God in accordance with the truth. And yet, what do the Pharisees and Herodians in our gospel today, and what do we ourselves so often do, but we, instead of seeing in Christ a reflection of the truth of God, and seeing in ourselves the capacity for that truth, sometimes we'd rather conform our sense of truth, or rather our reality according to the sense of our own truth. And instead of seeing God and conforming ourselves to him and, and seeking his will, conforming our will to his, we would rather ask that God's will be ours. Or the other way around, we'd rather ask that God's will be ours. Did I just say that? <laughs> okay, where's the emphasis? The emphasis is we'd rather that what we will is good and that God wills it too. If he doesn't happen to will it, well, then we, we're not really willing to give up our will. We want it our way instead of God's way. <laughs> so it's a wordplay right there. <clears throat> but are we humble enough under the instruction of Holy Mother Church, under the words of sacred scripture, to, um, to give to God what is God's? And we are his and just as that little denarius, that Roman coin, is stamped with the image of Caesar, we give that which belongs to the world back to the world. But we who are stamped with the image of God, we, we give ourselves unto God. And so the snare that the, uh, the um, Pharisees and Herodians are trying to set for Jesus is trying to bring him down into our own understanding of what is right and good and true. But rather, Christ Jesus is always showing us that our standard must be divine, heavenly, and of God himself. And that we ourselves are signs of that standard, made for holiness, made for goodness, stamped and, and made in the image and likeness of God himself. And so may our hearts be conformed to see, not with the light of the world, but with the light of grace. And in that way, may we, feed, may we find peace and know ourselves in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is the visible sign of our Father in heaven. Amen. So sometimes recognizing that our, the very power of our prayer and the call to virtue comes in the very support of family life, as Tobit and Anna reveal to one another the, the great power that is necessary to respond to. Let us also ask the Lord to hear and answer these are prayers and petitions which we raise for family, friends, neighbors, and strangers alike. For our Holy Father, may God grant him the strength and grace he needs to lead and teach the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in focusing on justice, mercy, and the good for all, especially those most in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children awaiting adoption, may Christ move the hearts of loving families in order to nurture, nurture and guide them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered in this holy place, may God's merciful love strengthen and sanctify us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, and in a special way this morning we remember Julia Amato Tellus. May they find eternal joy with God in their heavenly home. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of remembrance, those we've been asked to pray for, and those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Glorious and gracious God, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers, and that in the example of the saints, you show us the witness that we are called to give each and every day for the sanctification of the world and for our own very good in you. For we raise these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries, which Saint, which Saint, which Saint Justin strenuously defended through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up, o Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Justin, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Then once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin the Martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, as we uh, continue to receive updates on uh, the different COVID restrictions, which have certainly been very much lifted in many ways, um, there were certainly updates even after we printed in our bulletin the most current, um, <laughs> most current directives from the diocese two days before the Mass and two days after printing of the bulletin, new directives came, so there's still fuller um, directives. In that regard, cleaning protocols and, um, and also how we will try to open up every pew here at St. John. So we'll try to uh, um, integrate, again, reception of, the Holy, of Holy Communion as an altar call, as we come close to the altar, close to the sanctuary. So uh, those will be forthcoming, but also the cleaning protocols, uh, because so many of you have been so very generous uh, with your time each and every day, uh, immediately following Mass with cleaning. So um, I know that those can be lightened now quite a bit, and we do have our, um, uh, we do have our um, personal cleaning station. If you'd like to, um, anytime you come into Mass, you can take a wipe and clean your own area, but uh, uh, regular cleaning will take place on a weekly basis at this point um, with just a simple cleaning uh, once a day. So um, 
for further details. I don't, we don't have that already figured out, but um, Deacon Dave, as well as the parish staff, will um, uh, come out with a certain um, directives on that that are uh, in concert with what we have been asked by the state and the diocese. So, the Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.